Hey Tom, it's been a while since I got to connect with you and when I saw your session come in, I was so happy and excited and I really value that you're willing to explore this topic with me. It takes a lot of courage and we're gonna totally make some sense of this. We're gonna totally make some um, sense of all of this. I, I don't like, I think that this is all just reading all of your memories and reading through, he's just such a fascinating person. You have such a good memory as well and you explore your feelings about things and you ask yourself questions as to what does this mean to me um, and what does this mean and is this um, is there something wrong with this or is there something wrong with me or um, you know you're investigating here you investigate yourself very few people are like this very few people are like this and this is how you would, you're the type of person I'll keep growing and growing and growing and expanding and expanding and you want to find more. You're curious about so much. All right. <laughs> I, I, I was like, wow, Tom is actually so open um, to exploring this with me. Nobody, like, that is such a hard thing for people to ask me to look into. It's one of the things, it, it interests me. Sexual balance interests me. So, all right, let's learn some stuff today, okay? I hope you're doing good. Did you find your cat? I know she went missing. She or he did. Um, I don't know what the end of the story is there. Anyway, I'm going to relax here and get tuned in. Tom Sacral Chakra. Relationship with masturbation. Relationship with just a sexual understanding from a young age. Hmm. It's really, it's like walking into a, an eardrum. Like walking into an ear. Like there's a... There's like, it's waxy, it's, um, there's like pokey little hairs in here. Um, there's, there's a lot of gunk buildup. And the shape of it is not um, spherical, it's kind of, like an ear shape is really strange, you know? It's like a weird thing. So it ha it's kind of uh, like awkwardly shaped and it's, it's um, got harder parts, it's not smooth or soft. I feel like I'm an insect that just went into an ear and I got stuck in the earwax. That's what it's like. But this is your sacral chakra. Yeah, there's something. It has to, there's sacral chakra and heart chakra um, energies that are at play here. I mean, the heart is starting to speak. It's starting to become um, more open, wanting to share. Third eye is also wanting to share, but it's a bit closed off about it, which tells me that there's some things that are hard to see then. Um, that's why you're asking for help in order to see something. But the third eye is a bit closed off, which means it would be harder to see into it further than you have already. Hmm. There's definitely shame in here. And uh, what is a... Uh, it's almost like an upbringing with, with sexual confusions and you may not have known about it. It's almost like absorbing certain awarenesses like a sponge but having no ability to understand what that is. This happens all the time with the human race. I get downloads all the time and have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> so it's kind of like a child receiving um, um, downloads about sexuality, but having nothing to work with in order to comprehend it because the child hasn't developed in order to even know what that means, to understand what why that is, but yet still is is developing an awareness about it. So you were sponging in a lot like psychically sponging in a lot of information at a young age without the tools to understand it and so 
there's some history in here is what it feels like um and it does got it does have a bit of the christian um like uh conf- christianity just totally confuses sexuality it almost makes it like it's a gross demonic thing and it's not it's literally a blessing you know and then shame as well it's like that story where your parents were kind of hearing you giggling with the girl and then um they were asking you to come in and you felt some shame about that that i also feel that here this is really great timing for your session tom because um sacral chakra i've been doing a lot of healing on my own sacral chakra there's something about the energies right now and putting the love into this space i don't know what it what the universe is what this real calling is, but um, sacral chakra is a big one to be looking into right now. So there's like a total divine time here for this request. So right now I'm just kind of feeling out all the basis of, of what just the initial energies that are here, which is very aligned with what you're talking about. It's, um, the structure is getting a bit, it's almost like, hmm, how do I want to put this? It's getting slightly smaller, but it's also drooping downward, and I'm, so I'm kind of in between, um, dimensions. Literally, I'm, I, like, half of my body is in the ear, weird earwaxy place, and then the other half is above it, and it's kind of like a dark, foggy, cloudy area. It's a shadowy place. There's a, there's hurt inside the heart in here and anger in this shadowy place. It feels safer to be, be in that earwax place than it feels to be in this shadow place. Because there's something brighter and more childlike about it, believe it or not, in the earwax place. Um, it feels um, safer. I mean, there's a lot of inner child type energies in there. Here, it's kind of, there's glo a gloominess here. Like a, like a purgatory type feel to it. And they show me that, I mean, this is really becoming different, the energy is. Even the, there's uh, spirits here that are communicating with me about it, and I'm unfamiliar with who they are. <laughs> so even that, it, there's a bit of a, like, a purgatory or haunted type feel. And if you were to draw, like, a figure eight, I keep looking at it, a figure eight, these other entities um, drew this for me. So here's this purgatory world is in this upper sphere and then this ear waxy world is in this lower sphere um and so i'm caught between this figure eight and in, in, in between the two worlds and these these beings aren't bad or anything um but their frequencies are different to me and they they feel like they understand that purgatory place so and they're helping to for us to both um understand your connection with it This is a this is huge, Tom. You're not only you, like the human race is here in this purgatory. Not only you are, I am literally the whole human race has a part of themselves stuck here in this infinite loop, in this purgatory place. I mean, it's literally like walking down a creepy alley of, <laughs> of people masturbating in the dark um, in a purgatory. And it's just like forever and ever, this forever hallway. And it's like all the souls of, of all, all these thousands of years even, not just right now, but all these years, thousands of years before we were even born also in here it's almost like it fragments the soul to have this experience 
sexual experience um, becomes shame and guilt and um, embarrassment and um, insecurities and all kinds of different emotions that are enough to even fragment souls but they're not saying necessarily the souls fragment but there's like this weird dimensional space that um, absorbs all those energies and it's just full of echoes to the point it's almost like the very souls are in here and nobody's looking at each other like it's like we're in all in our own quiet little secret place but we're all next to like there's just rows and rows and rows and rows and rows it's a really weird place i've never seen this before i mean you are opening up a link to another dimension that the human race this needs to be you could potentially be healing the entire human race here by asking me this question and then choosing to heal yourself is allowing me access to not only you, me, but human race for years and years and years and years in here. That's how big this is. This is going to be uncomfortable because I'm going to turn the light on and every single soul is going to be exposed, okay? It's like you're the, one of those dreams where it's just not right. <laughs> There's this feeling of exposure <laughs> that this is like one of those dreams. Okay. But it's really happening. Some people, when I turn the light on, some people are, are using, are seeing. There's all different reactions. They're not all the same reaction. Some people stay completely in the dark and even go even darker. And some people open their eyes and look around and they don't react at all. They're just like, it's almost like they were dreaming in a way. I mean, there's this one woman, she looks like she could be um, like a, a rough around the edges waitress. <laughs> like um, too old to be wearing high heels and um, kind of a shorter skirt but still pulling like still doing that because it's like single mom but like you still the kids are grown up now so there's something of the age of this woman um and she's got like kind of lipstick wasn't put on her lips quite right but she she she's seeing the light is on and she's seeing she's one of these people that i keep look i keep noticing and she's um like her mouth is open like and she she's like looking around like this but nothing is really registering it's, it's it's like she's seeing but she's also not she's not at the same time she's seeing and not seeing it's like she's still half um dreaming in a way and she's not saying anything she's not feeling anything she doesn't feel weird she doesn't feel confused she doesn't feel freaked out she doesn't feel like oh cool this is like the coolest thing i've ever seen you know she isn't doing anything she's just looking like this. Yeah, this is really gross. I start to see um, weird worms and um, diseases basically, but it looks like insects um, coming out of her. She's naked here. And she doesn't seem to even be aware of this. You're, you have a huge um, higher consciousness that is watching the scene with me. And you're really, um, you, you're really processing a lot right now. And you're serious about this too. And as you see her and what is taking place and you see all the others and how everybody's reacting, it's, it's shifting you. It's shifting you on the inside. And I see the woman, um, she's slowly like withering into, um, like almost like she wants to die. And she is kind of withering into her own death. And now the scene is changing. I'm, I'm in the hull of a big ship. And it rocks back and forth. It's like you get used to this feeling after a while. It just does the same rocking back and forth. And it even kind of creaks a bit. Um, but it's always kind of creaking a bit here and there and then rocking back and forth and it's dark um, under here But it's kind of um, hypnotic in a way It's just you just let yourself get carried away with the rocking and don't think about how long it is taking 
to go to travel anywhere just really just let yourself just don't worry about time and it's kind of this um like this um this thought here like there's something i could do to pass the time nobody's watching me and it's dark down here why not <laughs> so there's this like thought going through the the mind of this person it's something to pass the time like why not i mean that's literally what the, what's going on here and I hear um, suddenly the sound of white seagulls. Like I see white seagulls and I hear white seagulls and there's a small window and I can see the birds um, are there. This is just suddenly appearing right now. And the more this man um, is thinking, you know, why not? I can just get closer into the shadow. Nobody can see me. I can't even see what's on the other side of the hole. You know, like, it's so dark down here. But the birds get, like, it's almost like the flock gets thicker. Like, there's, like, what would be one or two? Now there's ten. Now there's, like, thirty. And they get louder and louder and louder, and they're almost, like, beating against the side of the ship. Um, it, like, just, almost, it's like this rude distraction, but he just keeps ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it and ignoring it. And he's kind of getting sucked into this sort of like this fantasy moment and it feels right and why not? It's a great way to pass the time. And um, so he's kind of getting into this experience right now. So he's going for it, okay? He's totally going for it. And the more he goes for it and the more that he gets into it, the more the birds start to appear. <laughs> more birds, more squawking, more noise, more beating against this um, deep ship, the depths of the ship. <sighs> and is there something weird about the way my heart is feeling like fluttering and, but it's not like, it's, it's a heaviness, like too heavy to flutter, but yet somehow fluttering. And, um, just a minute, it's just passing through here right now. I mean, I feel like I'm a super heavy rock sinking into the depths of the ocean. And the birds somehow they're 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 like kind of pulling their themselves into a form like a person. Um, this is really the energy of heaviness. It's almost like that thrill of this like exciting moment is um, is done, and the heaviness that that takes over is like. I mean, I feel so heavy right now, like like a building is, is like I'm getting absorbed into a building, but I can feel the weight of all these floors and people that work in the building. Like I can feel the weight of so much and it's, it's almost hard to breathe through it. And I'm getting uh, like crushed by it as well. So I'm, I'm literally just letting the energy just circulate through here. Cause this is what we're releasing from inside yourself. There's something else here. There's some definite other things here. There's kind of some... <sighs> Alright, I need to just let this heaviness process all the way through. <sighs> I mean, the heart feels really, really weighed down here. I'm, I mean, I feel like so weighed down right now. Just going to continue to welcome it, accept it, receive it, acknowledge it. Let it, 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 not let it control me sort of thing. I mean, I'm releasing it from inside yourself. This is really huge, Tom. But it's also kind of like, it's also... It's like coming out from the inside, 
but make you feel kind of like sinking forever and ever and ever under the weight of so much. But just holding back a bit is actually letting it just kind of come out and then slough off. Just keep sloughing off until it's not a part of you. And it doesn't have to control you either. But there's these whispers, these other beings that are whispering. And I'm starting to realize there's this other dimension where there's a lot of um, influence by other entities um, to plant these seeds of like some kind of arousing idea. Just, you know, pass the time. Like, this is some kind of arousing idea. And with, if they can influence the human, um, like they can part they can be slightly par participant in it okay slightly involved in it as well it's almost like it's almost like they're asking you if you want to um, have an experience with them but but by do but by just like convincing you to have an experience with yourself it's um i've never seen this before either okay my spirit guides that want to explain more of that what that means and what I'm seeing here. But for right now, I um, there's another energy thing going on and I'm getting lodged in my throat and my third eye aches right now. There's something of um, like a circular space in the center um, of a wheel that is, it's literally just a flat ground, but there's white and black. And it's, it's like if you have a pizza and you cut it into a bunch of slices, um, at white, black, white, black, white, black, okay? But it also, it's like full of light. So the white lights are on, the black lights are on. The white lights are on, the black lights are on. And it goes around like a merry-go-round, around and around and around. And it's just flat. It's like this flat wheel of light that's separated in pizza, um, like triangular shapes and, and then white, black, white, black. And in the center of this wheel, there is a circular space where you could sort of stand in the center of it. <sighs> this is a weird thing. This is a, like, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at, there's something but beneath it. Um, it's sort of risen up above. Um, it's just a, it's like a circusy um, energetic structure. And it's really, it's very weird. All right, so I'm looking at the structure here. <sighs> Trying to make sense of what it means. It's like, there's so much built up here with this, this odd circular thing going around and around, and then there's this centerpiece. But I'm kind of looking flat on, and I, there's something inside this center spot where you could stand. But I don't see anybody standing, but there seems to be somebody or something in there in that center part. Um, but then it's literally on the side being held up by like a pipe. <laughs> and so why isn't it like tipped over, you know? It's, it's really awkwardly put together, but somehow this structure holds, and it's just... It's very, um, there's something circusy about it, something um, a bit absurd, ridiculous about it. You're watching this too. I mean, you have this really expanded higher energy just watching this, observing this with me. And I ask you, what, is, what does this mean to you? I mean, this whole structure needs to come down. But what is down below? I mean, here, here, it's almost like this is way up in the clouds up here. But this weird po post, and then it's kind of dark. It, like, I don't know how deep this goes, or if we're in the sky and we're way above the land, you know? Like, what is beneath this? It goes down forever. 
I will say your energy is so ignited here. That I mean, the more and more I talk about this, the you really have some intense dense energies circulating and coming um, out, releasing, circulating, absorbing, processing, thinking. So you're really, you're having some major energy shifts going on. <sighs> okay, you tell me to stand in the centerpiece to help me understand. And you're reminding me about bringing a better understanding about those beings in the other dimension that plant these seeds of influence. You are. You're saying that. So I'm going into the center. It's literally like a railing. It's almost like um, at the top of a ship, a big ship, you would have this... Um, part where you could stand up way up 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 and you could see in great distance in every direction it's like um standing in one of these it's got a kind of a it's circular it has a a railing kind of around it to keep you secure um it's not particularly a lot of room Man, your, your, your energy, like, there's just so much, there's, like, huge wave of energy just kind of coming out of your, your heart, out of even your very arms. Like, my arms feel very exhausted and weak, but I, there's just this energy that's just, like, literally almost like a frisbee of energy just, like, coming straight out. I mean, it's just coming out of this. I tell you this um, sort of omniscient eye, like you're like this, you're just like the sky watching me. And I tell you uh, that one thing that I notice is I don't feel grounded. I'm just gonna just talk about the things that I, I feel that I can definitely tell you for sure. I don't feel grounded. I don't know what the white and the black means. I don't, none, nothing's coming to me about it. So I just simply don't feel grounded. Then you ask me to leave the railing and to stand on this that goes around. And I say, it kind of reminds me of Las Vegas. It reminds me of playing kind of like a game where it goes around and then you have the ball and then it kind of goes into a slot. But there's, there's no real slots, it's just lights. Um, it's kind of like a Las Vegas, a weird Las Vegas thing. But I'm standing on where the lights are. You, you tell me to stop the movement, so I do. And then you tell me to break down the structure. And as I start to break it down, um, for some reason, the more I break it down, it breaks down into what is... Um, a junk pile and the junk pile is starting to look like the development of a beautiful rose that's made out of um, bits and pieces of stuff wood chips and wood pieces and b broken bulbs and um, just junk like it's um, a pile of junk but it's starting to transform into what looks like a flower a rose So now we're moving this weird post into the center and I'm kind of lining it up so it just looks like a stem for a really big flower. But it's incomplete. It's like it's trying to be something that it's really just a bunch of junk. But it's trying to ascend that feeling of the broken junkiness um, for it to be something truly beautiful. But it never goes all the way to being what it could be, this beautiful rose with stem. Like, um, it doesn't become that. It's like you you also want sexuality to become um, not that broken junk, junk 
um, confusing, circusy, you know, thing. It that it could become molded and shaped into something that feels truly natural and beautiful, like a flower. It just doesn't ascend to that. It doesn't. It doesn't become that. It just stays weird like this. And your omniscient eye <laughs> um, tells me to just break it all down. It's almost like you need to let go too. Of of tr I I I don't know what that means exactly just yet. I want to continue to investigate it. It's like um, it's like you're working through frequencies at a certain dimensional level, and you're trying to accomplish something at that dimensional level. But you, ha you can't accomplish it at that level. So everything that you've been trying to achieve, which is a transcendence of this sexual thing, um, for it to become something beautiful, or mean something beyond what it feels like it becomes, um, you have to let go. You have to just totally let go. Um, and then all this stuff just breaks on down, and now you get to... Um, try this again from some other dimensional plane. But let, let's just keep... Let's just keep moving forward here. I still don't know much about those beings and the seeds that they plant, <laughs> the influence, um, but I'm supposed to break this down now. It's like a kid that built a tower of blocks, like one block on top of another on top of another in order to make this like tall, really skinny um, tower. And then um, the achievement, right? Of getting it to be like, 25 blocks tall, you know, and it didn't fall over yet. I mean, the achievement, you know? But it has to be, it's just the hand swipe comes and the tower goes down. That's what it's like. It's starting to fill with the inner child energies again. I'm starting to feel that connection again. And I see that once this falls, um, we're still kind of in a gloomy, dark, dimensional plane. And it's above that earwaxy place. <sighs> and your heart is really, like, has a lot of energy that's... I mean, it just, it just emanates em energy. This is a, feels like a relief now. It feels like it, a relief. It feels like a coming back into yourself. It, the, the, if any feelings of dirtiness are completely dissolved, there's no dirty feelings at all. doesn't feel circusy, it doesn't feel absurd, it doesn't feel, it just, it feels like nothingness. It feels like starting over again, working from scratch, but it doesn't even feel like starting over again because we're starting from scratch. Like there's no, there's no history prior to this moment because it's called a beginning. So there's nothing else known other than this moment. And so what do we build at this moment if we don't know what we are building from? We're just starting. I mean, we can come think of anything. They're bringing me back to what it's like to be a baby. Like, you don't know who you were bef before you became this baby. You don't know what you're working with. You don't even know what you're coming into this lifetime with. And so what instinctively comes out of the child is literally um, where they're starting from that they don't even understand it. They don't, all, all they know is this is a beginning. They don't even understand the concept of a beginning. They just go by complete and utter instinct. Complete and utter just, ran, like what could be just some random ideas that they're working with. But it's, it's actually pulling in from somewhere. I just keep thinking of, um, in this beginning, we're starting with the color red. And red is contemplated, but not by thought. It's just digested in the energy field without any understanding of what that color means. It just is a process. 
I will say the sacral chakra area is aching a lot. That's really good, actually. There's a lot of broken down energies, and we're starting from scratch, so there's some massive energy shifts going on in there. So this is interesting. I'm taking a part of the heart that I'm placing in the sacral chakra. And let's see what happens here. It's almost like they need to develop a more meaningful relationship. Not the sacral going into the heart, but the heart going into the sacral chakra. Gosh, there's still, like, it's it's now... See, I'm going down. I, I, I'm literally, I'm going down into the, a deeper place, even beneath now that earwaxy place. And it's dark in here, and it's like everything that's been broken down just shattered its way into this dark, deeper place. Huh. They show me um, sweeping the dirt under the rug, um, but the dirt, um, it, it fell into this place so it wouldn't have to be looked at. It wouldn't have to be seen. And now it's just all just shattered glass and it's very um, not safe down here, right? Because there's glass everywhere, there's broken things everywhere, and it's dark. So it doesn't have to be looked at. It's like you d you created this dimension so that you could sweep all the dirt d down there. <laughs> um, but really now it's time to l clean it up. Clean up what this is about. Man, third eye is aching right now. It's, I'm starting to get a headache. I'm very exhausted. A heart is, is like, I mean, there's just such a wealth of energy just ringing forward. Also, the heart in the sacral is, um, it's just like a, um, it's almost like the heart is red and then the sacral is like brown red. And they're like, wow, you're a different color than me. You're kind of my color, but you're slightly different. <laughs> Literally, that's what the energies are like, and they're just slowly mixing together and trying to make sense of their colors. <laughs> that's the best way I could describe the energy and the way that it feels. It's like this. It's just kind of like getting to know each other from a very basic, like, childlike way. Oh, you have brown hair. Well, I have brown hair too. Mine's just kind of darker brown than yours. Yeah, so we can be friends now. <laughs> it's very much like that. <laughs> very childlike. You are feeling cleaned up. I, I know this session comes with a lot of strangeness. Um, not a lot of answers. But I will say you will notice a shift in, in yourself. This is some of the most intense energy I have felt someone release in a while like this whole session it's just been constant release 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 like not even stopping like you're just constantly like releasing so much and now we got all this down here i'm still working through this um trash bin that it, it just it's its left final resting place but it doesn't go anywhere it just remains a bunch of broken things down here All right, just gonna continue to get, just circulate sacral chakra and heart energy, um, heart in the sacral chakra. I'm just circulating that around some more. And the more I mix this brown red and this red color, it starts to turn black for some reason. Gosh, you have, it's starting to turn um, black, but in this black, there's some um, blood. <sighs> there's a lot of unknowns about your soul history, what you could just, just say it, put it that way. Um, this is a really weird scene. It's a woman on the floor 
and uh, like a giant knife comes and cuts her. So she's a torso basically and in an upper, like her torso up. And then the other half of her was removed. And she's just bleeding everywhere, all over what is like a bathroom floor. And her like her legs and the lower body were, were like taken. She's only half of a person. She's so confused and she's in shock and she just keeps bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and bleeding out. She's now, she's actually just died. <sighs> that scene is starting to, it's like, it's the, the movie's over. It's like it's coming to the end and the show's over now. And it's just starting to fade. I don't know what's on the other side of this, but it could be. This could be getting into darker and darker things here. This is some sort of sidewalk or side street. And it's you so pitch black you couldn't see your hands if it was right in front of your face. You can't see anything here. But it can I can experience what is like walking on a sidewalk or a side street. Um it's kind of dodgy feeling. Like I feel like I'm in a dodgy area and I'm kind of being sneaky or mysterious as I'm walking through here so nobody knows who I am or I'm trying to kind of hide my identity more or something like that okay uh, we're getting into a much darker place there's lots of like dead babies and they're they make up what is the walls of a a rounded tunnel and they I they seem to be baby skeletons but they also seem to somehow not be some are real babies I, I mean there's just it's such a multitude and it says babies and um, they're like grown into the walls of this tunnel and the tunnels quite large and we're still a bit of a distance from where this these babies line line the walls of the tunnel and then there's this giant black hole at the end of it and I start to see you um, pl pleasuring yourself um, and you have kind of like a like a long trench coat and it's like t tuffed up like the collar and then you're kind of hiding and you're kind of doing this in like secret underneath the this trench coat okay in this dark place and then there's these babies on the walls um down there in this big black hole and it's just like a dodgy energy create weird place you know This is totally not satisfying, but yet it needs to be, like, done. I mean, it's like, it's got a satisfaction to it. It's, um, got a process. It's, um, it, it's just... I have to wait for this to come full circle here, okay? Because I, I can feel how the energy is shifting from, hmm, this is a good place. And then it, it, then it begins. And it's sort of like a man that is a shadow in a black coat, in a black, like a pitch black place. You know, it's the dodgy energy about it. Um, doing things in secret. Um, sneaking around kind of thing. And then this um, is happening now. But it, it's great. There's a point where it's like really great, but then it's it's just starting to kind of fade out and just um, the meaning has it, it's got so many faces. The meaning of this has so many faces to it, and some of the faces aren't uh, smiling here. But how do you make all the faces happy? How do you make them all smile? You can't always make everybody happy. I'm 
so now that you you've gotten to the other side of this it's uh the light there's light starting to glow and emanate in here it's almost like being in the inside of a penis okay walking down this tube finding this sweet spot okay <laughs> that's what it's like no judgment all right that just is what it is okay all right that would make sense about the babies because what is the what is sperm you know it that that's what it creates in the end you know and so there's like all these like i don't know are these bait what are these babies uh <clears throat> were they murdered are they not alive anymore like what does this mean here isn't that what Christianity is about? Like, masturbation is like um, the death of babies or something? Because it, that you can't do that? Like, you can't even take contraceptives. Like, you can't, you can't let that stuff go down the drain or anything. <laughs> That's like babies right there. There's some kind of meaning to it like this. Th this is so important that this scene is so important because you're starting to cry and you want the sun to take away this, you want it to take away this like weird purgatory that you have to live in and walk through and you can't find your way out of it and you want the sun to heal this and the sun is, is coming up now. It's almost like the gesture itself, the act itself is asking for heaven to free your spirit, free your soul from what the purgatory of life even. Um, and that's why when it doesn't free your spirit from the purgatory of life and you come back to the purgatory of life, it's like this um, disappointment, this suffering about it. Um, it's like for a brief moment you experience what is heaven only to return to the purgatory of life again. Um, it's this like never ending dark down the dodgy hallway <laughs> of your own, you know, it's like oh, this is what should be sacred experience. That was, this was a really huge, um, this is really impactful, um, Tom, really impactful. Like, I, I, there's something that happened in your heart. Um, there's some, like, self-love or self-acceptance that it just suddenly reached you. Um, you're realizing that you don't have to have any judgment about this at all. Um, and I even think that you reaching out to me to help you is helping you to not judge yourself because... I definitely don't judge you at all. In fact, I find this fascinating. Um, I find this valuable. I find this to be super important information because it's about human psychology. It's about what we go through, the struggles we go through as human beings. We all go through a version of this. We all do. So it's giving you permission to love yourself. That's what this is. It's giving you permission to love yourself. It's exactly what this is. And me talking about it right now is already like it, it, you're just sobbing and sobbing. And it's like all this weird stuff that we've been through and that we've seen and that hasn't really made a lot of sense. Um, the weird whispers, the inspirations, um, the grossness, the, the pleasures for only a brief moment. It's like the birds making all this ruckus, like the wrongness. It's all starting to dissipate it's all starting to dissipate there's so such a headache going on here which is great because i can feel the expansion of your of your third eye and it's helping you it's it's starting to see what is you in with a more loving eye a more loving view of yourself the omniscient eye is starting to see and see you in the light of something beautiful and give you permission to love yourself that's what this has been all about. It's it's monumentally huge. All right. All 
All right, hold on. There's there's still so much that wants to kind of let go. So I don't want to I don't want to just be like, okay, we're done. You know, um, there's what could be like the breaking or the cracking of the ground, and um, it's it's really loud. It's like this loud crack that is echoing and echoing and echoing and echoing and echoing. It's like I don't know if you've I love this. It's very satisfying sound. But um, if you're out by a frozen lake. And it sometimes it gets this like really ridiculously loud crack, and it can be startling even. But it's cool. It's a really cool sound. Um, I hear that crack here inside of you. It's like we just broke through this like ultimate structure that needs to be broken down, and it isn't going to fall into that weird place where we just sweep the dirt under the rug, right? Because that place doesn't exist anymore. We're actually okay to be what we are. That's, you know, it's okay for you to be who you are. And that crack is a breaking of, of what you were before this session. That part of your identity that needs to break down. <sighs> yeah, this is so much better. I'm just gonna continue to let it, it's literally like the Titanic just broke into two pieces and is now sinking, but it's it's not a loss. It's a gain. It's a it's the loss of an old identity, which is isn't you're not losing anything at all because you were already growing out of that skin, out of that shell, and you needed some assistance to break free. You just needed someone to help you be born again, okay, <laughs> in a new way. So. I mean, this is like a rebirth of who you are, of your very identity. <sighs> okay, I better... <laughs> There's so many energies, it's like, wow, there's just so much activity going on in your energy field. Let this circulate, okay, Tom? Let this circulate. Just let it circulate, because this might be circulating for days <laughs> and weeks. Um, but if you want me to check on this, you know in three to four weeks or something like I feel like there's there's more that we could really let go of but um maybe it's it's all the stuff that is still being let go of as we speak right now um, but this is like this is monumental this is huge to accomplish this much in a single session this is huge like we're getting we found the like the golden nugget <laughs> of transforming tom's life you know it's huge it's exciting all right you just let that circulate just love yourself because you can love yourself more now than you've ever been able to love yourself before you're a brand new baby <laughs> it's your birthday that's cool okay it's great it's really great all right, Tom, that's all I had to share. Thank you so much. It was so good to hear from you and do this session for you. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay, have a beautiful day. Bye.